Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week we are going to be doing a breakfast meal prep and it's gonna be breakfast burritos. And so I bought three big packages of ground pork and I three big packages of ground turkey. I am following a recipe that I found on Pinterest. So I will link the recipe I'm following yeah. down below. Yeah. I'm going to be cooking all of the meat today, so that way it's all ready to go when I actually assemble all of the breakfast burritos. And I kind of want to give hi, my oh, hi. <laughs> I kind of want to give my avocados a few days to ripen up. They're pretty green right now, and I'm hoping in a few days I'll have like one or two that I can throw some avocado into these breakfast burritos because I love oh, avocado and. in my breakfast burritos. Oh, so right now we're going to be cooking up all the bacon and making all of the breakfast sausage meat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on making all the bacon and making lunch. So I have four packages of bacon that I'm gonna be cooking up. I know you guys are probably sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, Kelsey, what are you doing? You can cook those in the oven. But I really wanna keep all of the bacon grease because I keep it in a little glass container and I'll use it like if I'm making eggs or something and I need to butter the pan, I'll just use the bacon grease. And it just adds a little bit more flavor when you're making some things. Like if you're gonna you know, cook up some chicken or something in a frying pan, just throw in some bacon grease and everything just tastes way better. I don't know how that is for like fitness and nutrition wise, but taste wise, 10 out of 10. So I am painstakingly going to make the bacon this way. Oh well. All right, so we have the bacon cooking. I'm in the middle of the second package of bacon. I have chopped up the peppers that I want to use in the uh, wraps. So I chopped the four peppers I had up. And then I have also pureed the onion. Some of it pureed, some of it just finely chopped. But that's for the, the onion is for the sausage, uh, breakfast sausage recipe. So I'm about to start that. Okay, so because some of this pureed and some of it chopped, I'm just gonna mix it together. And we need a third of a cup in here. And in case you didn't know, 0.25 of a pound is 113.5 grams. Yes, I had to Google it because for some reason my iPad does not have a calculator on it. So annoying. Anyway, the recipe comes from Happy Money Saver. So thank you, Happy Money Saver. We are going to be trying out your breakfast sausage patty recipe. So it calls for a third of a cup, but I'm gonna do a little bit more because I did 
like four onions in there. So just get some, some of that onion juice to flavor it on up. And then they say to mix the seasoning before adding it, but we're not doing that, of course. Two teaspoons of parsley. Two teaspoons of salt. Seems like a lot of salt. It was probably like one and a half. One teaspoon of sage. Sage gives me really bad heartburn, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen. This is really, that's like half a teaspoon. And that's like half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of thyme. Half a teaspoon. Mama. Ma. All right, one teaspoon of chili powder. It's like a rounded teaspoon, but that's all right. Black pepper, one teaspoon. One teaspoon of basil and oregano. Joseph, please. It says half a teaspoon optional. So I'm just gonna do like all I have left have to refill this after and we need two teaspoons of maple syrup and I did some heaping teaspoons What I'm actually gonna do right now to make this really easy for the next two batches, because I only have two more batches of turkey, I'm going to get all the ingredients, put them in into bowls, and just mix it all up really quickly and leave it in the bowl so that way, meal prepping with kids, totally unexpected things come up. Jordana's gonna need to be fed soon and Joseph needs a nap soon. And we have swimming lessons in less than two hours. So I'm not gonna be able to prep all of this before that. And Joseph is getting tired to the aspects that he is starting to bug the boys as you can hear. So what I'm gonna do is measure it all out, mix it all up into bowls so that way the ingredients also mix into the beef, the, not the beef, but the, the meat as well, and then put it into the fridge. So that way when I get home, we can just start cooking it up again when I have time. I'm gonna try and finish up this second pack of bacon that I'm cooking, throw it into the oven and let it all just stay warm in there. And then, start feeding Jordana her bottle just finished so I want to get all this done now because she also needs her mouth stretches done now because my alarm just went off five minutes ago and Joseph needs his nap so I also have my meat cooking on a really low setting that I know I don't normally keep it on it's like at a three right now out of I guess 10 is high um, and that's because I'm so busy trying to multitask and do lots of things that I don't want the meat to burn so I'm just gonna cook it on that 
and especially because whenever it's time to go feed Jordana, I don't want it on a high temperature by accident and then really burn it there because I have to sit to feed her her bottle. So it's going to cook low and slow. I've always wanted to try that. I see people having their like masher thing and I didn't know if it was like a potato masher or what the heck they were using for their ground beef. But that is my potato masher and that worked to break up that ground beef so well. So I'm just gonna drain the ground beef. It's not beef, why do I keep saying that? I'm gonna drain the meat, which is pork and turkey, <laughs> um, into my strainer. The bacon's almost done here. So I'm gonna take a break from this and then feed Jordana. She did fall back asleep, which is great, giving me enough time to mix up the bowls of the other turkey. I guess you didn't really see that. Turkey and pork. Um, but I've got two bowls here. I'm going to cover them in saran wrap, throw them into the oven. No, that's a lie. Into the fridge. <laughs> oh, okay. And then let the grease just drain right out of the meat. The bacon, like I said, pretty much done. I'll feed Jordana, get the kids to their swim lessons, and then whenever we come home, it'll be time to figure out what the heck I'm doing for dinner, because didn't plan that. <laughs> anyway. All right, I'm going to let that sit and drain. I'm gonna take the bacon out. She stopped crying, so I'm gonna try and get some laundry folded and then switched over and started. And then I'll feed her, take the kids to the beach for their swimming lessons. This 
is the bacon plus all of that plus what we ate while we cooked the bacon because let's be honest who cannot eat bacon while you're cooking bacon so just saying There's a mosquito near my face. <laughs> anyway, I finally got all the bacon cooked and it has been super hard not eating it all. All of us are having issues staying away from the bacon. Anyway. I wanted to show you guys how I'm making bacon bits because, thank you. I'm going to- We pee each other. <laughs> I'm going to include bacon in the breakfast burritos, but I'd rather do it in bacon bit style because then I can use less bacon and also have bacon bits for bacon bits for other cooking and stuff so I am using my handy dandy I think it's a three cup food processor make sure you get Joseph what he's doing yeah I know wait for it What are you doing? For the U.S. viewers, milk bag. <laughs> Bagged milk. <laughs> milk bag, not milk jug. Look at the milk in there. Whee. <laughs> Are you eating the bacon? I'm not making the bacon so that it's easier for you to eat. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, please be careful. Joseph, would you like some milk? I'm not. So if I don't stop Joseph, he will make bacon puree, so. But he knows how to work the food processor really well. No, we have to split them in half. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Isn't that just the weirdest thing? I'm gonna laugh if you get it all over. One more. Here, here. No, in half. In half. Okay. And that one. Yep. Put both of them in. All right. Oh. Oh. This didn't go down. Okay. Now we have to take all the bacon out. Uh, excuse me. Now we put the bacon in. There. All right. Watch out. Watch out. Okay. Pulse. Pulse. Nope. Pulse. 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 bacon bits for a reason he's just discovered how delicious bacon is even though we've been trying to feed it to him for months
Bacon bits. That's a lot. And I'm hoping that I can have some saved for some meals. But uh, I don't know. With 50 breakfast burritos, it might be tough. I'm probably going to have to like spoon it out like two teaspoons or something per wrap. I don't know. But we'll figure it out tomorrow. I'm also trying to figure out how many eggs um because i'm trying to do like i don't know i think i'm gonna do a big thing of scrambled eggs and i would like to put like mushrooms yeah. and things in it i've got to try and game plan yeah. how i'm gonna do this because obviously <coughs> no that's all done Obviously, the moisture in the peppers and the mushrooms and things like that, you're going to want to cook the moisture out because you don't want your wrap getting soggy in the freezer or whenever it's being like reheated or while it's freezing um, or thawing. So you kind of want to keep as much moisture out as possible. I did buy cheesecloth in case I want to try like squeezing the moisture out of the eggs. Don't know how this is going to go. So we're we're just going to do what I always do and fly by the seat of our pants. All right, so today we are going to actually do the breakfast burrito prep. Yesterday we cooked all of the ground pork and ground turkey and all the seasonings and we cooked all of that together. And it's coming back to room temperature because I kept it in the fridge overnight. So we have all of the bacon bits chopped, cooked, chopped up put into a bag and again I'm just bringing it to room temperature just because whenever you're assembling it you're going to want it all at room temperature you don't want it too hot because it's all going to be kind of soggy anyway if you do that so two things I'm going to do right now I'm chopping up the mushrooms um so basically just dicing them up as small as I can and the peppers and then I'm going to cook them and try and just get all of or as much liquid out of the vegetables as I can because I do want to make sure I am putting vegetables into the breakfast burritos. That came out to being a heck of a lot more mushrooms than I thought it was going to be. So I'm just going to start cooking them up so that way I can throw them into a bowl with some paper towel underneath. So after they're cooked, they don't like suck back any moisture or anything like that. And then they can come to room temperature. I'm not going to mix them with the eggs. I'm just going to kind of keep everything separate. So I'm going to dice up some peppers and then we'll start cooking the eggs. All right, so I don't want too many peppers because I know that they release a lot of moisture. So we're gonna keep the peppers to a minimum. I mean, I think mushrooms produce a lot of moisture too, but eh.
So I just put everything into the oven. It's not on, um, just so that little hands don't get into the food that we're just trying to bring up to room temperature. Plus, as you can see, Joseph really enjoys Joseph really enjoys playing with the water. And I always gotta watch and make sure he doesn't have it on hot like he just did. So my eggs right now are cooking on about a three temperature. So I always cook them low and slow. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to cook eggs, but I always do that in case I need to walk away and deal with something in the house. I'm not going to burn the eggs. I've also never cooked eggs in a pot before, but I didn't have anything bigger to cook these in. And turning out to be all right. There is a film of egg at the bottom, but that happens when I cook in one of my other frying pans anyway, so. Essentially with the eggs, we're just trying to cook all of the moisture out of them, and then we'll let them cool down to room temperature. I might have to throw them into a frying pan, I don't know. But my frying pan does the same thing by just coating the bottom of it. The non-stick is just gone in that frying pan. Mama! So, I think I'll just stick with the pot and just clean it out in between this round and the next round of eggs. So I have 60 eggs to do 50 burritos. So we'll see how far that goes. So I threw the eggs onto a baking sheet that has like a silicone mat on it just so that the steam from the eggs themselves wouldn't create moisture in a bowl. I was going to put them in a bowl but then I decided not to. So I'm just going to let them cool down like this. They still might create moisture between themselves and the silicone mat but it's a lot less moisture than sitting in a bowl and creating wow. trapped moisture I guess. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So <laughs> the egg really burnt to the bottom of that pot. So I just put a bunch of hot water in with some Dawn dish soap and we're just gonna let that sit while I finish making lunch for everybody. And that's actually gonna be kind of perfect because the first thing of eggs should be done. And then while I'm cooking the second one, I can kind of start assembling some breakfast burritos because I've got everything else done except for this second batch of eggs. And the cool part too is that I waited long enough and a lot of my avocados have ripened so I should be able to throw some avocados in there which I'm super excited about because I freaking love breakfast burritos with avocados in them. I've also just now have this like new obsession with avocados so they're just so good. Alright that was a huge mistake. Don't cook eggs in a pot. Lesson learned. But it was a great arm workout. So now I'm going to have to split up the eggs into one of these guys. It's like my only pan thing that actually still has like some sort of a non-stick thing going on. I don't, it's iffy if all of it would fit in there, honestly, but we're going to try it because I don't like I'm running out of time. So it's almost three o'clock now. I don't even remember what time we started at. Probably should have timed that, but uh, oh well. So we're gonna start these eggs and
All right, a couple of things I want to mention. Number one, I shredded a crap load of cheese. And one of the easiest ways to shred cheese and quickly that I have found is freeze your cheese. Sounds super weird. Do not take your frozen cheese and try and make cheese slices out of it though. Not gonna work. But if you take frozen cheese and it's like frozen solid, cause I have tons of cheese in my freezer right now, throw it into the fridge overnight. Our fridge is pretty cold, but it's not like icicle cold or anything like that. Anyway, so I have done this, take that cheese and shred it and it shreds just fine. And that way one, you can stockpile on cheese if you need to, cause it's on sale. Two, I don't even use cheese slices anymore. Everything in our house is done with shredded cheese. So I just wanted to add that little tidbit in that if your cheese is on sale and you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna go bad before I use it all, freeze it. There is nothing wrong with freezing your cheese. Just don't try to like cut it into cheese slices after cause it can crumble. Um, but yeah, I have, I've done two things I've done where if you have the cheese in your fridge and you forget about um, shredding it while it's pretty cold, cause it's really easy to shred cheese when it's really cold. So if you bought cheese from the store and you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna shred all this, but it's kind of like getting hot and mushy, throw it in the freezer for like 10, 15 minutes, make it really cold, makes it really easy to shred. Um, just because lately I have been shredding a crap load of cheese cause that's all I do now is just stockpile on cheese, throw it in the freezer. When I know I need to shred some more, I'll take it out and put it into the fridge either overnight or for a few hours. And then I just open it and I just cut up our block into about five sections and just shred it all, throw it into Ziploc bags into our fridge. Yeah, sometimes it'll clump into a little bit of a ball, but I just kind of break it up with my fingers, good to go. So um, number two, that I want to mention with my assembly line. I am sure there is going to be a more efficient way of doing this. I am probably only going to be making about three at a time because I don't want the tortillas to get soggy in any way. So I don't want anything to be sitting on it too long. I basically want to get the burrito made, get it rolled up, get it into tin foil and then get it into a saran wrap. And I also am gonna be doing three at a time in case I wanna change things up, like adding avocado. I have three different types of cheese. I've got marble, Monterey Jack, and old, extra old or old cheese, one of the two. Um, so I am gonna be only putting one type of cheese on them. And then I'm gonna be labeling the Ziploc bag as to like, okay, this has avocado and extra old cheese. This has avocado and Jack cheese, no avocado, whatever. So, that's just going to make it really easy when it's time to freeze. But I just really want to make sure that the tortillas are not going to get like soggy in any way. Um, so I am going to have to take my eggs off the silicone rack because they are pretty wet underneath. And so for these eggs, when they're done, I went and restocked my paper towel, which was the problem earlier. Um, so I am going to take the eggs out and I will put, put them on some paper towel just to suck up that little extra bit of moisture that went on there. And then we will start the assembly line. Because I have to get all of this done in about an hour because I have to start making dinner because soccer practice starts at 6 and we got to leave by like 5 30 which means that they got to eat by 5 so they're not running on a full belly so I'm gonna be cooking the second batch of eggs while starting to assemble some of the breakfast burritos what's going into them is scrambled eggs a mixture of the mushroom and peppers I chopped them up really small and then some of them are going to have avocado. They have the breakfast sausage. They've got bacon bits and I'm going to throw cheese on there. And then I'm just going to wrap them up and I'm going to do three as a tester. So that way I can see what size of aluminum foil I need to wrap them up. And then I'll probably just slice up a bunch of aluminum foils. So I have them to hand, like just grab that they're handy. 
and it's that way I can just grab a little rectangle or square of it, wrap up my burrito, good to go. Um, and then after they're wrapped in tin foil, I am going to wrap them in saran wrap so that they're extra airtight. And then I will be putting all burritos that are made the same way into a Ziploc bag together. So let's see how efficient this is going to be. Okay, 50 burritos done. We have a heck of a lot of meat left over. We have some very cranky, tired children. We have a few eggs, no bacon. We ran shy on bacon on the last five, but we have tons of cheese left over. So I am getting a tortilla press because I know how to make tortillas. They just don't roll out nicely. So I should be able to pick up the tortilla press tomorrow. So I might just make some more tortillas to try out my tortilla press and use the rest of this meat. I haven't decided yet, but 50 burritos are done. Took a heck of a lot longer than I thought it would to roll them all up. It was about two hours just to roll them up. I do know people I know I was not doing it efficiently, but I was doing it as efficiently as I could in the small amount of space I had with children everywhere. You might be able to see in this video, Joseph just started going ham on the cheese and eating it right up. But 50 breakfast burritos done. So we have some easy breakfasts coming up. If you guys have any more suggestions on meal preps you want me to try out or whatever, because you're too scared to do it, I have no problems doing it. So just let me know in the comments what you want me to try out. If you have any other combinations you want me to try. I was thinking about like more so like sliced veggies instead of the diced veggies. Might try that next time, I don't know yet. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so that way you see future videos. Have a good day, guys.
All right, I was going through and editing this video and I just wanted to make a note on how I cook them after they have been in the freezer. So if you noticed, I wrapped each burrito in tin foil first and then I wrapped them in saran wrap. So what I do is I turn my oven on to 350 and I take the saran wrap off and while the oven's heating up, I throw the wraps in there. And then my oven takes about, honestly, like 15 minutes to hit 350. And then I leave them in there for another like 20 minutes to half an hour. And they're perfectly good um, to just take out of the tin foil. You might need them to cool down a bit and then eat. So that's how, and they taste great, honestly. Um, I'm actually super sad though, because <laughs> as you can hear, I was so excited to put avocado in these. And then in making these, I learned that I don't like heated up avocado. <laughs> so if I were to make these fresh and throw avocado in, it'd be perfect, it'd be great. But as soon as you heat up the avocado, it kind of like changes the taste. And apparently I don't like that. So that really sucks because I think I made, I think maybe I only made like two batches, like so 20 of them Hi. with avocado. So, I mean, that's not terrible. Hi. Hi. Uh -huh. So that's not terrible. Um, and I will eat them. I just won't do it next time. But um, I, basically, my point is, is that it makes it super convenient if you um, have like not a lot of time in the mornings to get to work. Before you shower, if you come downstairs, I told Josh this, if you come downstairs and turn the oven on to 350, unwrap one or two burrito, breakfast burritos, throw them in there, go upstairs, shower, get yourself ready, all that stuff to get out the door, and then grab your breakfast burritos and eat them on the way to work in the vehicle or whatever, or just bring them to work with you and eat them there once you get there, either way. Um, but just the amount of time it takes to get ready, they'll be ready when you're done showering and all that stuff. So that's what makes these super awesome, in my opinion. Another way that we eat them is coming downstairs in the morning and then we just throw the oven on, throw them in, and then Josh and I'll sit there and drink our coffee and stuff like that. Once we hear that the oven has heated up, then we wait another 20 minutes, depending on how many are in the oven, and then we eat them. So the kids love them. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, they've eaten them two to three different times now. Um, Joseph makes a huge mess out of them, but he loves them. So they were honestly a huge time saver for lazy mornings for all of us to be able to eat a really good meal. And it was totally worth it. And I'm actually really glad I did this. And I'm definitely gonna be doing it again when I run out. But uh, so far we've still got like 30 plus burritos. So we're going strong. <laughs> Have a good day guys.